All right, so we have a ton to do in this video. Lots of stuff to fix and complete on the exterior. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into it and I'll show you guys what I need to do. So in this installment, one of the things we're gonna tackle is replacing where this trim was. Um, but before we can do that, we gotta seal in here, make sure everything's all nice and sealed. And we're gonna be painting the exterior. So in order to do that, we gotta remove all of this rubber trim here from uh, just, I guess, I think it's original, but it's got paint on it and such. So not in super great shape. And then we gotta remove the window because we need to pull off one of the panels on the inside and also the window needs to be removed to get a good paint job on the exterior and reseal it. We've got to address this area down here, get new trim on it and get it sealed. Jack brackets need, uh, I don't know, redone. This corner's a little, little wonky, so I'm gonna try and strengthen it up. Got some ideas there. And then I've got some holes to patch. Um, in addition to some holes to patch, we come over here to this side. There's going to be an awning that's going to go on this side, so we're going to try and get some holes drilled for that, maybe get it mocked up. Uh, this is going to probably have to be moved to the back here. Um, we'll have to see on that. And then I've got some exterior lights that I'm going to put on this side and this side over here. We'll have to drill holes for that. So it's a lot of exterior work and we're gonna try and get the whole, at least bottom half, not gonna worry about the roof yet, but the bottom half painted. So that's what's in store. Oh, and I have to figure out something to close the gap here. Uh, I have some ideas. So yeah, I guess now we just kinda gotta go ahead and jump into it. Oh, and one other thing that we have to do is drill our holes for our anchors to secure this thing to the truck. So I've got some new bolts and we're gonna put some steel plates on the top here to spread the load. And uh, yeah, get those installed, but I gotta paint the seal so it doesn't rust. That's the first thing that's gotta happen. So we got the window out. There's just a series of screws around the outside that hold it, uh, basically bolt it to the frame of the camper. So you just gotta undo those screws and then pry it apart. So let's take a look. There we go. You can see where the screws mount in. They just simply drill into the frame of the camper. And then on the inside, you have this trim piece, and this is stapled. And this is what's preventing us from getting this last bit of wood off here and the walls off on this side to remove the insulation and clean up that. So, windows out. Um, we're going to remove that inside wall there and take the insulation out. And we'll have to take these staples and snip them um, in order to get this trim piece off. The staples were driven in so deep, way deeper than they needed to be, and there were so many of them. I tried all sorts of things and couldn't get them cut. So the only way to get this off was to just pry it out. I'll be able to straighten out the frame, but man, what a pain. So I got the edge here as cleaned up as I possibly could, used some paint thinner, scotch Bright pad, scuffed it all up, cleaned it up as best as I could get it. 
what we're gonna do right now is get some white enamel on here and uh, get it out just a little bit. That way we can go ahead, get this window back on here, get the camper sealed up. And then I can continue painting once the window's already on there because we'll have cut this edge here and got some paint on it. So that's the plan now. I'm not going to put the um, inner trim back on. It didn't really serve a function other than, um, I guess for looks on the inside, but I'm just gonna trim out the uh, inside with wood most likely. So that is the plan. Go ahead and get that painted up and we'll get the window back on. So this is one of the corner pieces of trim that I pulled off and as you can see it's got this just crusty hard seal like a foam seal I don't know this wasn't really sealed very great I don't know if it was redone at some point or what if this factory but definitely got to reseal these corners because you don't want to do a bunch of nice work on the inside and then have your corners leak so I got to pull off all these corners that's also part of repainting it as well so we'll pull them off get everything all scuffed now we can paint right to the corner and then when we're done I'll clean these up as well slap these back on here sealed up and then, yeah, that'll take care of the corners. I got some uh, Dicor corner tape and some Pro Flex or Flex Pro RV sealant. Uh, I can't remember, I'll show you guys though. Uh, that's gonna go in the corners here and behind this trim. Um, it's got another coat of paint on the window. It's looking really good. Um, hopefully be able to get the window on probably tomorrow. So I'm gonna do probably a third coat here. And uh, yeah, then we'll be kinda done with this side and can start moving on to other areas. For reinstallation of the window we're gonna go ahead and get this track all clean and then I have some butyl tape right here. This is uh, some Dicor butyl tape. That's gonna go right here along this edge after we get it cleaned up and that's what's gonna be the primary seal. After it's mounted we're gonna go ahead and put some RV sealant around the edge just to seal it up nice and tight. To get the adhesive off, I'm just using some paint thinner and this little uh, pry tool that I got from Harbor Freight. Actually, it's working pretty well. So, got my butyl tape on here and I did the seam right here at the bottom, but got a nice strip all the way around. Didn't stretch it, curved it around the corners nicely. Now, we're going to go ahead and pop it up onto the camper. All right, it's a little bit after eight o'clock, but the window is in. You can see we got it all painted, so that way when we go to paint this side, everything's all taken care of. Got some nice new hardware on here. I also have some trim that should go in this channel, cover up the screws. But yeah, that's uh, one big thing down. Now that's nice and sealed, and uh, camper's all sealed up for now, so I'm gonna call it a night here, and we'll pick up in the morning. So one big problem is this corner jack. You can see how much play there is to it. Um, so yeah, we gotta take this off, see what's going on behind there, and then that'll also allow us to clean this whole corner up. So when we go to paint here in a little bit, we can get this portion painted. All right, so these are some of the screws I removed. Clearly not the right screw for the job. See, so we got two different types of screws here, plus one I took that broke. Then you can see this one's driven in all nice and crooked like. Perfect. Then we got two other ones, so yeah, it's a mess. So I'm testing out making this corner stronger, and what we're installing are some quarter 20 rib nuts instead of using self tappers like they do at the factory. So that's what we're gonna try and do here, make this corner super strong. It was just, I mean, it's in poor shape for sure. So we're gonna get this squared away and see how this works. So ran out of time yesterday, I didn't get to show you guys, but this is what we got completed so far. This whole side is painted and done. And just gotta pop the jack brackets off to finish up here. Painted today, we're gonna split this in two sections and do all the front, hopefully today. And then stepping over here, got this whole side painted. I got one more coat to do and then it will be done. Same thing again, gotta pull the jack brackets off, finish up the corners. So today, what I'm trying to do is get this corner finished and have to get all the trim pieces. I'll show you actually. Yeah. 
have to get all these trim pieces sanded down and painted as well before we can put them back up. So lots of prep, lots of painting. It's taking quite a while, but uh, this side is just a little bit foobard. There's some broken bolts in some of these holes, and so it's making finishing this difficult, but that's what we've got to tackle. So yeah, and then we're going to get some holes patched and uh, clean up this side, cut in this edge, and I'm hoping to get this jack bracket all back on, and this corner all resealed today, as well as the front um, painted at least a coat or two, so we'll see. Okay, so right now I'm taking off the door, and all I'm doing is sticking a putty knife in here and breaking the seal, and just removed all of these screws all the way around the door frame. So that's the next thing we need to do, pull the handle off and the door off so we can paint this back wall. I also patched these holes and sanded them. Just have one little one to do there. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that one. There's a big one. I might just put an aluminum plate over it. We'll see. Uh, took that out. This corner is all basically finished up. So it'll be ready to put the jack bracket on and yeah, seal it up after we get this back wall painted. I realize I haven't filmed much doing of work. It's just been more updates. So let's get this door pulled out. I'm guessing this foam must be factory because it was on like everything. It's going to peel this off, get this cleaned, and then yeah, we'll go ahead and start painting this back section because it's basically ready. I got these little roll lock discs for the drill. They make quick work of this stuff. So before I paint, I'm using one of these moderate scuff pads to scuff all of the painted surfaces to get it nice and scuffed up, prepped for paint, and then we take paint thinner and wipe all of it down. So we got a couple coats of paint on the back here. Things are looking pretty good. I'm gonna end up putting a steel plate right in this area and riveting it to the frame and the siding because these riv nuts for the struts see a ton of torque and they were actually bent. So I'm gonna try and strengthen them up and uh, yeah, make this area a little bit stronger, but making good progress to be able to get the door on tomorrow morning for sure. Now we just really just have the front to do. Uh, the back is looking pretty good. Or sorry, the side. But yeah, making good progress. So last night we got the front all prepped here. Everything's sanded down and scuffed and cleaned. Got all of the corners, everything's all cleaned up. We are ready to get the last big piece of this thing painted. It's gonna look so good once it's all white. So that's what we're gonna do right now, get this painted. So we got the butyl tape on the door frame here 
and we're gonna go ahead and get this thing hung. 30 foot roll was almost enough to do the frame parts, the window and the door. I literally needed about, I don't know, eight inches of this other crummy stuff that I had on hand. But that die core stuff is the way to go. So yeah, we're gonna get this door hung. It'll be a big, uh, nice milestone. So I put two screws up here at the top to help locate it. And don't want to stick it to the frame before it's fully there, or else that butyl tape will start to stick. I should have picked some different spots, but that's okay. the rest of it situated, put more screws in. So I'm preparing to put this corner back together and what I'm going to do is use some small crown staples and we're going to staple the siding to the frame here and then we're going to put the Dicor corner seal tape on and then trim and well jack bracket first and then the trim. So we have the Dicor corner tape on here. This stuff is legit. Cuts up real nice. Uh, it's got a nice backing to it. So this is felt. So what you do is your trim piece, you put the sealant on your trim piece and then you put it up here. This felt helps create a nice seal. On the back side of this felt is a really thick, sticky uh, adhesive. Um, you can kind of see it a little bit here. But yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get the jack bracket on, put some um, sealant in the corner of the jack bracket, press it on there and get it bolted on and then we'll do the trim. using some paint thinner to clean this up. I also got to be careful because the underlying paint is enamel, so... <laughs> hmm. Alright, this corner is done. Jack bracket is on, trim is on. Now we'll come back and do final sealing of the edges once we get all the other trim on. We'll do it all at one time. But yeah, this is looking real good. We have some seal uh, insert, black insert coming for the center piece of the trim there. But I am pumped to have this done. Put the jack back on, get this baby stabilized. So basically the final coat of paint is on the front and it's looking so good. Oh, I'm pumped. Man, this is looking so good. I just gotta paint the underneath and then obviously the roof needs to be painted, but that's a, I don't know if I'm gonna do that right away, but we'll see. But for the back right now, what we're gonna do is tackle, brighten it up a little bit, tackle this bottom piece. At least I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the wood. So I tried looking for a piece of metal that could span from here down to the bottom, but I just couldn't find anything. And I really wanted aluminum, so I didn't want something to rust. But what we're gonna do instead is I have a nice, um, I think a five by one 
board, I'm gonna cut this whole width. And I'm either gonna paint it white or I'm gonna paint it gray like the floor. I might do gray, um, but it's gonna sandwich up in here and cover this whole area. And behind it, I'm gonna call conceal everything. And then we'll have aluminum trim running down all the way to the bottom. So that's the plan for there. I'm gonna cut the wood right now. So this is what I'm doing for corner trim. Just gonna be aluminum angle. It's one inch by one inch. And this is gonna look real sharp. Man, that's gonna make this look so polished. So we'll do that here on the top and side. And then we'll do the same thing on the front. Also pro tip, you can cut aluminum with uh, a wood blade. I have a non-ferrous um, blade on this, but any high tooth count wood blade will cut through aluminum just like wood. Also, got the handle repainted nice and black and this brand spanking new uh, porch light. It's LED, way better than the old incandescent one. Looks super good. So happy with how this is all turning out. But yeah, it's looking real good. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna, how much more I'm gonna get done today. Might call it or a little bit early today and enjoy the last little bit of my weekend. Okay, excuse my messy, messy workbench. I know, I know I work in a state of chaos when I'm on a project like this, but doing up the aluminum trim right now, drilling out the holes, and then I've got this countersink bit here on this drill, making some nice pieces of trim. So I'll show you guys what that looks like once I get it on. Okay, back out here after a little break. You can see we have this trim on now. It looked like this before with the gap. I went and pulled off that old stuff, but it's looking super good. We're gonna go ahead and stick that around the edge. Got it all, oops, can't see, got it all down here. So yeah, gonna put that up. That should clean things up nicely, but this new trim looks super nice. I'm stoked on it. All right, got the molding on. Looks super good. Left it a little long so we can make sure it's, uh, well, it doesn't shrink or anything in the heat over the next day or so. But man, what a difference on there too. Now the last thing we gotta do is this piece of trim down here, which I'm gonna sand right now and probably, hopefully paint tonight, maybe not, but then more trim goes in that. That's really gonna tie things together. Got more aluminum to finish the fronts there. Um, you can see on the back here, we got that side on. We'll cut this here um, after we, we're gonna put another piece of wood right here, but I'll cut after I do that. And then same on this side. And then these are steel plates. Uh, I think it's 18 gauge that I'm gonna use for the inside to uh, basically as a backing plate for the anchors that I have yet to drill through the floor uh, that hold the camper in the truck. So bolts will go through the steel and some big washers and that'll just spread the load. So that way it's not, uh, let's see, that way it's not like this where it's anchored to wood, there'll be a steel plate and then the anchor will go through that and it'll be a nice, strong, sturdy, uh, yeah, spot. Just got this trim piece all cleaned up and sanded. Got the back pretty decently clean, removed most of the adhesive. Now it's time to go ahead and get this spray painted. This is the lower trim that goes on the side of the camper on the bottom where the floor meets the walls. And I have one more piece to sand and clean up and paint and then that's all for the exterior trim. So before I can seal this bottom edge here and put the trim back on, got to finish the jack bracket on this side. So last night I pulled the bracket off and got this all scuffed up and coat of paint on it. This side was in much better shape. So I'm going to be able to reuse the same style of bolts. Don't have to do a ton of work, which is going to make this super quick. I'm about ready to put down the edge seal, uh, the Dicor corner tape, and then we're going to stick the jack bracket on with a bunch of sealant behind it. And this side will be nearly done other than putting on this bottom piece of trim, which we already got that painted as well. So once this jack bracket's on, we'll put that on and just really seal it all nice and good. And then we can move over to the other side. So before I glue this trim on, I'm just holding it up in a couple spots so then I can pre-drill some of these holes. You can see it's been taken off 
once or twice before. Not sure what's going on there. But yeah, we're going to pre-drill the holes into the wood. And then we'll go ahead and put some sealant on it and get it up. Bottom piece of trim is on with the black rubber insert. Oh man, let's, let's just stand back. Look at how good the side of this looks. All right, and then jack bracket's on, and jack is back on. Now we've just been working on getting the trim dialed up here. Only a little bit more to go there. We also went ahead and caulked all of these edges and seams for the most part uh, down here as well. So getting things ready for another coat of paint. So let me deliver you guys a little update on where we're at. So we have all of these edges are now caulked. Just waiting for it to dry fully before we can throw some paint on it. And stepping to the inside. Everything in here is also caulked on the edges. Getting ready to install flooring. Um, did have a leak in here last night. We got quite a bit of rain, had a puddle of water right here. Not sure where it's coming from. I think it might be coming from the door because uh, I didn't, um, all I have right now is, all I have right now is butyl tape here. So not a bunch sealing that. Um, or it's coming from this corner here water sits right in this corner and it might be flowing in so I got to figure that out but this morning we are working on getting the jack bracket right here dialed in a little bright there so I'm gonna clean this up I'm gonna clean the jack bracket off get it painted get this painted so we can get this back on and sealed hopefully today and I also got all of the aluminum trim cut um, and drill at least for this side so it looks really nice I'll show you what the, that looks like once I get it back on and then I have it all cut for this side just need to drill the holes so lots of progress I'm taking I'm taking these jack brackets and sanding them down to bare bare metal and then spray painting them with gloss white rust-oleum uh, not the most durable um, coating but It'll do the job for this. It matches the camper as well. And then I'm also, what I'm using to do that is just a cheap angle grinder from Harbor Freight with uh, these flappy disc sanding wheels. They work awesome. So one thing I gotta do still is drill a hole for these new anchors that are gonna go through the um, floor here. And then that's where the um, tr the anchors, where the turnbuckles will mount uh, to mount this thing in the truck and what I'm gonna do is just take the old ones out and I'm gonna follow the same spacing since that's worked well for my truck and yeah so that's what we're gonna do right now this is what it looks like once it's all installed we have the steel plate here that can spread the load out it's sealed up with some caulk keep that all sealed up washer lock uh, washer and a grade 8 bolt and on the outside this is what it looks like underneath lots of sealant canted at an angle so the turnbuckles will come down into the truck at an angle now all four anchors are in place and sealed up so that's check that off the list now definitely want to get these doors figured out i've got the wood just need to paint it or rather cut it to size and then paint it and i've got some 3d printed guides for the wood little doors here that i'm going to print up and uh, that should handle those as well so yeah we're getting close now that we got this last jack bracket done, I was able to get this last piece of trim on. And now this side is nearing completion. Um, still gotta do those holes. And this past week, I discovered a leak on the inside in this back corner and I didn't really know where it was coming from. Um, so we got the door all sealed today with the clear sealant. 
So should be good there. And then I pulled this trim off and the fabric basically runs to the end of the trim here. Um, and there's the only holes that are in there where the screws are. So I believe that the screws weren't sealed well enough and water is coming in through the top here, pooling up and seeping in through the screw holes. That's my theory. So use some sealant to seal off the screw holes and then we're gonna test it with some water probably tomorrow, see if that fixes things. If not, then probably have to pull off this piece of trim. I also got rubber trim on the window here. If you guys saw what that looked like before, I'll show you here. I think this looks much, much better, much cleaner. So super happy. I have this uh, 16 gauge sheet of six by 18 inch steel here. We're gonna cut this down to 15 inches and then cut it in half. So we have two three inch by 15 inch strips and that's going to go over here. So I'm gonna basically put steel right here and rivet it on. That's gonna give us reinforcement for this hole and then some mounting options for other things. So if we wanna stick uh, um, if we want to stick the door stop back on, but we'll have another plate over here as well. Um, the reason I'm going so long is because it's pretty close proximity to these holes here and I want, um, some good overlap and distance around this hole for strength. So we got these reinforcement panels on and riveted. Everything is sealed behind this panel. And now we got these, um, the little nuts back in for the struts. And we have a nice big fender washer here that helps kind of distribute the load onto this steel plate. So that should offer some good strength and structure for when you have a heavy load up on the roof uh, before this little area here was bent because these were just into the aluminum frame. And so we don't want uh, to have that happen again. Don't want the rib nuts to pull out either. So did that and then have the same thing over here as well. Still gotta cover this hole with something, but yeah, it's coming along. Super happy with how these little access holes turned out. These are custom designed in 3D printed guides that I made and they work so well, and I think they look super awesome. So really stoked about that. On the inside here, I'm gonna also design something, a little handle here so you can slide these back um, while you're inside to get access to them as well. Why not? If we have the ability to design and 3D print our own stuff, why wouldn't we? So I believe I mentioned on an earlier clip, um, this wood that I was painting, this is what covers now the bottom here where the siding ends. The siding probably ends somewhere around this mark. And yeah, this kind of just makes it look really nice and polished. Now, one thing we're doing right now is mounting these two inch uh, tall rubber bumpers on here. And this is to space the camper off of the truck. Now they did come with these originally, at least what I know, I've, I've at least seen it. Um, so yeah, these are from a company called Buyers Products. They're pretty thick, so we're gonna get these mounted up here and show you guys once those are on. So just like every other corner slash edge on this camper, we are putting on this Dicor corner tape and then we will be sealing uh, the aluminum with uh, that Geoflex sealant. So yeah, got all of the, well, at least on this side, aluminum pulled off putting this tape on then we're gonna get it sealed up and then we'll be done so this is what the front of the camper looks like all trimmed out with the aluminum and then it's sealed and then we got this front let's call it fascia this front piece of wood here on with the bumpers so these are super super sturdy those are gonna be nice prevent the camper from um, hitting the truck because before it would rub on the truck bed somewhere up here because the the back of the tundra is a little uh, what is that? Con convex? I don't know. Uh, sticks out a little bit, but yeah, the front is looking super, super good. So I've got these latches off of eBay, and they are an exact match to the four-wheel camper ones. So there you go. Here's the part numbers. But yeah, I'm gonna get these slapped on. 
Man, these fresh latches look so good. Oh, it's so awesome having these on here. This thing is getting dialed. We're getting so close to being done. Look how good this thing looks on the outside. Just gotta patch that hole. Back is looking dialed. These plates are looking good. Man, cannot wait to get this thing finished and on the truck. So another component of the exterior that I got here are these light lights that have a flood lens on them. And I'm thinking about basically mounting them up towards the front right about, probably like so. So give some more light on the exterior of the camper. Could be pretty nifty. So I just put a tape line across where the top of the light would be and then marked basically halfway from the window here to the edge. And that's where we're installing this light. Now I already drilled my holes, uh, two for the screws, one for the um, power cable. Is that right? Power cable? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and I put some silicone around the screw holes um, just to protect from water. I'll do uh, RV silicone around the outside of the light. You don't really want to use silicone on a camper on uh, areas that are exposed kind of to the outside because it'll attract dust and dirt and grime and stuff. So now we're going to feed this power line through here and then bolt up this light. Boom! Done. Now we We'll repeat the process on the other side. This looks cool, looks good. Uh, I think this will be nice to have. Makes wiring things up and all that stuff a little bit more difficult, but uh, you know, gotta do all this work now before you get the inside in place or else it's gonna be a royal pain to do <laughs> later. So yeah, then we'll just seal around the edge here and especially this hole for the cable pass through. And uh, yeah, that'll be done. So let's repeat the same process on the other side. One of the last things I have to do on the outside here is patch these holes. Now I got some really thin gauge aluminum and I just cut a nice little patch here and that's going to go like that basically and we'll run some bolts through here and secure it from the inside and make sure it's sealed. So got that hole and then we have this hole back here where the diesel heater came out. I'll patch them for now. If I need to use them later I can always remove these and make use of yeah, these holes that exist. So that's the plan. And then the outside will be done, basically. So we have this patch in place. We got six screws on it. You can see the foam. We got some weather stripping foam. Seals at it pretty nicely. I'll probably still run a bead of sealant around this edge. I've got sealant on the inside of it as well. So I think that's good enough for now. I'm probably just going to leave it silver. I may end up using this hole again in the future, so I'm not going to worry too much about how it looks. I think it looks just fine. So in the back here, um, I realized that I'm going to need to put something here on this edge. I've caught my foot a few times and chipped the paint off of the wood. So I've got a piece of aluminum angle iron that I'm going to stick on this edge here. That'll give it a nice uh, layer of protection. So we're going to go ahead and pop that on there. May do one on the bottom at some point, but probably not right now. Um, I also still have to patch up this hole right here. So I'm going to try and do that as well before I've got some other things going on today. Got that little piece on. It's the little details that matter. I think this just, I don't know, makes it look so much more polished. So here is a look at what this patch looks like. I just used the old uh, piece that went here um, as a template to cut this out. And I used tin snips to cut this pretty easy. And then that's the back side. It's got some closed cell foam weather sealing on it. And yeah, all we're going to do is just mount it up and that'll look good. Dunzo. Looks pretty dang good to me. Good enough, anyways, for a hole that I may reuse later. All right, the Outside of the camper is basically wrapped up and where I want it to be. The roof is going to be a whole separate project that I'm going to probably make a video on redoing it and redoing the solar. But as far as the exterior of the camper is concerned, I've got all the big stuff, major things that I want to get done before I jump into the interior. And I've already started working on the interior just because I've had to divide and conquer and make progress where I can. But 
wrapping up that trim and that uh, hole that I had to patch was really the last little bits of the outside. And I think the camper is just looking super awesome um, and polished. I'm so happy with how it's turning out. And it's really motivating to see it start to come together and I cannot wait to get it on the back of the truck and see how this whole package looks together once I get this all dialed. But yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Leave a comment below and let me know what you guys want to see in addition to what I've already showed you guys or if you guys have any questions. Hopefully I did a good job documenting the process. It's uh, kind of hard when the these videos are spread out over multiple weeks and I'm jumping around doing all sorts of different stuff. But uh, yeah, if you guys haven't subscribed, definitely please consider that. It helps me a ton. And uh, like this video, share it if you want to. And until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video.